Pastor Bill Evans, Chetland TV. Uh, I'm from Chetland Fellowship Baptist Church here in the big city of Chetland. I'm a Toronto boy, and uh, I found this little town to be my home. I live here, I plan to die here and get buried here, and uh, uh, hopefully be remembered uh, and what. I want to leave a message with you that's got to do with uh, actually something I was reading in my devotions today. And um, Chet TV is providing these ministries for us pastors to do. And so every uh, there's about five of us, and every uh, five weeks you get to come in and do some messages. And uh, so here I am with my time. And, been, and as before God, God, I need a message uh, for, for this afternoon. And uh, when I go down to the radio station and, and hear uh, my devotions this morning was, was the message. And I was reading in Proverbs chapter 10. And uh, Proverbs is a book of it's called Wisdom Literature. And it's about the wise sayings of Solomon. He wrote by and large many of them and uh, his sayings. And then uh, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, and the, or whatever. These are called wisdom literature. And in the Song of this uh, Proverbs chapter 10, uh, I was looking at it, and, and the ideas come off the page of things that are vital considerations. I, as I went through the 32 verses, and we're not going to touch them all, but as I went through them, I saw uh, a, a pattern of at least four things that strike me as vital things to consider. And uh, one of these is that um, uh, my, my first point is um, uh, the, the, the way things are compared in the, in the passage is this. Um, losses of the foolish and the wicked. Losses of the foolish and the wicked. And then another one is words have consequences. Words do have consequences. And then uh, finances of the lazy. And then the last one, security of the wisdom and righteous. Security of the wisdom and righteous. I want to just consider those four things if we can briefly together here in a few minutes. In chapter 10, we find uh, it starts off with an interesting statement. And uh, it's a proverb of Solomon. It says, it says, a wise son makes a glad dad. Father's Day is coming up in the year. And it says, a wise son makes a glad dad. Uh, I've been around uh, situations and, and one guy said to me, he says, what does, uh, my son said, what do you want for, for, for Father's Day, Dad? He said, I want you to stay out of jail. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Uh, I work at the jail. I'll talk about that in a few moments. It says, a wise son makes a glad father. But then the hard part for that, for the losses of the foolish and the wicked, it says, but a foolish son is a grief to his mother. It hurts the heart of the one that is very precious to you. Uh, Mother's Day, I told the folks at church, everybody's got a mother, and whatever, you might not know who your mother is, or you might not know who your father is. But somebody said one time, on the palm of your hand, there's an M inscribed. It's from the curls in your hand, but that little M points out that it reminds you of the fact you have a mother, both hands if you wish, and then whatever. It would have been cool if God made an M on one side and an F on the other. Uh, an M for mother, and, and a foolish son is the grief of his mother. Uh, he goes on from there down, and, and the, the back of the, uh, and this is where my uh, drunk tank uh, story comes in. Um, verse 13 says, this is on the lips of the discerning, wisdom is found. If you're a discerning person, you'll have wisdom to share with people. But a rod is for the back of him who lacks understanding, or the Hebrew word actually is heart. If you have no heart, no care, concerns, and whatever, then uh, a rod is for your back. And I, I find guys that don't take time to think uh, what their actions are going to do. And we get them on the dunk tank, and let me tell you, if you haven't been there, it's a cement floor. There's a bathroom and a sink, and they're all tucked together. It is not comfy, and you lay on the floor all night. You don't get a blanket, you don't get a mattress, and whatever. It's not fun. The rod is for the back of that person who is uh, uh, heartless, careless with how they want to live their lives. You get caught, there you are. I get these phone calls. They're not pleasant phone calls for me. You do the crime, I do the time, <laughs> we say. Um, in verse 14, it, it carries on there. It says, wise men store up knowledge. The wise keep knowledge and think about things or whatever. It says, but the, with the mouth of the foolish, ruin is at hand. Just the simple mouth of the foolish, um, the ruin uh, comes to those persons. The things that you say can get people fired. The things you post on the internet right now can get you fired and whatever. So ruin comes from the mouth of those who are foolish. 
Those are your losses, losses of foolish and the wicked. There's more in there, but I'll tie them in as I tie in the other parts. And so then we go to this idea that um, there's words that have consequences. Words that have consequences. Verse 6 says this, Blessings are the head of the righteous. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. People have violence in their hearts. You look around the world, you see the news and whatever, and the violent act stems from what? The Bible says, as a man thinks, so he is. As his heart feels, as the things that he pays attention, all those things. This is what's going to work out in your mouth first and your hands will follow. And I've done funerals for people who said, uh, I always said I would do that, and then they did it. And their loved ones are left uh, to deal with the hurt and the pain because the words of the mouth uh, said violent things, and uh, it came to working out. Uh, words have consequences. Verse 11 is the same idea there, and it says that um, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. It brings joy, it brings instruction and peace and blessing. But that's the mouth of the righteous, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Hides violence, well, I don't really mean that and whatever, but you, you say hard and strange things and whatever. And, and then, of course, we know bullying is a big issue done with uh, written word or, or words that are spoken uh, really hurt people. Verse 14 says, wise men store up knowledge, but with the most foolish ones that, whatever, we, we had that one there, foolishness brings to ruin. Um, on down to, uh, I have here, uh, strife in verse 12 is, is a, a word that's uh, there. Hatred stirs up strife. If you've got things and you don't deal with things, you're going to be causing up strife. You start blurting off what you feel about situations and whatever. And uh, if you haven't fact-checked it, you should be careful because you really look foolish if it's somebody fact-checks you and, and whatever. But stirring up strife is what happens. And then he says in verse 14, and there we had the idea that he says about ruin. And then look at verse, uh, my 17 says, hopefully you can take your Bible at home and sit down and look at some of these verses. He, he is on the path of life who heeds instruction. You remember being at school and you didn't want to learn anything? You failed. Oh, well, that's uh, it's, it's three years in grade four like me. Uh, not fun, right? He is on the path of life who heeds instruction. But he who ignores reproof goes astray. Um, people say ignorance is bliss. Did you ever sit on a tack on your chair at school? Well, why did you sit on it? Because you didn't know it was there. If you sat on it, you knew you were there. You're just extra dumb. My friends, God puts no premium on stupid. Never ever do you find in the book put a premium on it. You're smart to be stupid. No, it's not. It's not smart to be stupid. And so ignorance is bliss. No, it isn't. And when you sit on that uh, thing, there's what you get. It's that attack. The lips of the righteous bring forth what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked, what is perverted. Perversion. No shortage of perversion in the world. There's cute perversion sometimes. You can change the songs about uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and all those things and whatever. You can pervert those things. That's called a perversion. But there's more worse perversions in life and, and such. And they're dangerous situations for us to be part of. The next one is finances of the lazy. This verse, chapter 10, verse 10, 10 verse 2 says, Ill-gotten gain does not profit. If you get gain, uh, you know, that's ill-gotten, you stole it, you, you, you cheated, and you got it, and whatever, I guess. You're always looking over your shoulder. You're always worried about being found out. And so ill-gotten gain is... Um, is something that's not a real profit, especially in the long term. And then verse 4 uh, makes this one here. You ready for this word? Poor is he who was, has a negligent hand. What's a negligent hand? It's not doing what needs to get done. Prioritizing and whatever. Somebody in town here told me that the other day. I was asked to do something. I said, I'll get on as soon as I finish this little job here. Forgot. And there was a disaster followed that situation. A disaster followed that situation. Not that people died. It was pretty serious, he says. Pretty serious. Did he get fired? He said not. <laughs> That's good. So um, in negligence, I, I'll get at it later. That's negligence. And that there, he says, is not a good practice because um, with a negligent hand, uh, you're going to be in trouble. But the hands of the diligent is what will make you rich. Okay, he goes on there. He says, uh, verse 5 talks about the laziness reward. He who gathers in summer is a son who acts wisely, but he who sleeps in the harvest is a son who acts shamefully. If you don't plan a garden, if you don't plan for the future, you don't store up some greens or stuff in your freezer, you just want to spend money, well, if you got it, do it, and whatever. The lazy is not rewarded with good things. Verse 15 says, The rich man's wealth is his fortress. He's, he's, got, he, he's protected, he's cared for, but the ruin of the poor is their poverty. I find a strange story. We, we have operate a food bank out of our church. I find a strange story. Very many times people uh, who need the food bank often buy at convenience stores. 
I like the people in the convenience stores, but their prices are higher because of the convenience. If you're poor, you shouldn't be shopping there. Get out of bed between six in the morning and nine at night and do your shopping. And then you will have the deals and the sales and those kind of things. But I find the poor, they tend to shop at convenient places. Are they lazy? You decide that. But the, 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 the finances of the poor, uh, of the lazy, uh, tends to be, uh, they, they want convenience, they don't have the money for it. And it's just kind of a strange situation. Uh, if you're poor because you, circumstances are not yours. But if you're lazy, the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. And uh, uh, so don't expect the food bank to feed you all the time. The, the vinegar to the teeth and smoke, is like smoke, and smoke to the eyes is like the lazy one who, uh, to the one who sends them. Somebody sends you somewhere to do something and, and you're too lazy to get done what's supposed to be done. Somebody, some kid comes in the yard and you kids, you want to cut, can I cut your lawn and do a very poor job? A friend of mine said that the other day. She paid some people to do a house 33 bucks an hour. And they, they said it's done, five hours they were done and uh, that was a piece. And, and it was an awful job. She had to go in and redo it all. That kind of name, thing is not good. Let's close with this one quickly. The security of the wisdom of the right, security and wisdom of the righteous. Verse 3 talks about having food. That the Lord will not allow the righteous to go hunger, hungry. Uh, if I was to turn sideways here in front of this camera, you see I don't suffer hunger. God takes care of all my needs. He promises to supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. And then he goes on here in verse 7. He makes this statement. The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. Ah, the name of the righteous. I, I'm hoping when, when I, I'm getting old, and I'm hoping if Marlon's still here in 20 years, that uh, he'll still remember Pastor Bill, uh, the fat little preacher that came and pre preached on television or whatever. And uh, it says, the name of the righteous, um, the memory of the righteous is blessed. Uh, we say that, it is, may, God, may they rest in peace, and may their memory be a blessing. The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. So rotten stuff out. Let's go uh, quickly here, verse 9, integrity. And it says, he who walks in integrity walks in, um, he who walks in integrity walks securely. Okay? He who walks in integrity walks security, securely. I heard a man say this, and it's very true. Very true, it's true. If you have integrity, nothing else matters. If you don't have integrity, nothing else matters. Think on that. If you have integrity, nothing else matters. If you don't have integrity, nothing else matters. You just do what you want. It'll be covered up. It's a scam or whatever. Integrity is very important in the mind of God. He who perverts his ways will be found out. If you want to pervert instead of being integrity, have a person of integrity. 27 prolongs life. It says there that the fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. And uh, that's uh, my, the rednecks who say... Um, What's the, last, what's the last words of a redneck? Hey, fellas, watch this. What's the last words of a redneck's brother? Oh, I can do that. And uh, uh, there they are. So prolongs life, uh, the Lord does, if we follow him and fear him. But the wicked's lives are shortened. Verse 30 says, The righteous will never be shaken, but the wicked will not dwell in the land. God's got a promise. He'll take care of me. I don't have to be afraid of what comes. The mouth of the, mouth of the righteous flows with wisdom. But the perverted tongue will be cut out. The lips of the righteous bring forth what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked, what is perverted. Proverbs chapter 10. Take a look. Let me challenge you. Take a look at it. Read it. May your heart be blessed as you do that and consider these things. Amen.